Okay, welcome to this tutorial on uh, 3D machining in Aspire. And uh, we're using an example here, an STL file that we've captured using the Laser Pro 4500 um, that we offer along with the CNC system. So, start up Aspire, create a new file, and the width of the material um, is going to be 325. 250 thickness approximately 30 millimeters margin bottom left and um, appearance just put it in a metal dark brass okay so we've got our uh, work area here for the block of material and uh, what we need to do now is import um, the model so file import and our 3d model and we've got here a uh, lion, it's an STL file, Let me just give that a moment. Okay, so this has come through now into our uh, modeling palette down here. And as you can see, it's a pretty good clean um, image we've got here. Um, a couple of things to note, when we've scanned it in, it's scanned it in back to front as it were. So we'll change that one when we go in. But here we've just got the basic settings and, um, you know, if we want to adjust what we're importing here. And um, so top surface is fine there. Don't need to rotate it. It's all pretty well aligned. Model size here. Um, this is the, the true size uh, of the model and stuff. We, we could um, change uh, the size to scale it down. But uh, that's fine as it is. And the important thing here is the zero plane. Now when we've scanned it in on the table, it's got um, a little bit of the height of the table with the, the model on it. So what we're going to do is just raise the floor a little bit so we can exclude this part as part of the actual model. Um, so if I reduce this to 28, I just click somewhere else out of this box to activate that. And you can see then we've excluded the rest of it because we've got discard data below zero plane here. Um, so this has brought in the model, um, but it's discarded the underneath uh, material. So if I hit OK now, there we can see um, our actual 3D model itself, and that's been imported nicely. Um, so the one thing that we wanted to do was to flip this round uh, the other way. So if I go to mirror here, and if I select uh, flip horizontal, and we're finished, it's pretty much all imported. So at this point then, uh, we've finished uh, editing the model and we're ready to actually uh, do the machining pass. There's one thing that will be useful for us uh, in the machine, rather than doing the tool pads over the whole block of the material, what we're going to do is um, pick out the outline of this model and use that as a, a vector boundary for our machining. So there's, um, it's highlighted up here, it has to be selected, and you can see it changes colour. What we need to do then is use this create vector boundary from selected components. Click that. It's quite subtle, you don't notice it, but if you go into the 2D view here and if you actually hide that, you can see um, what it's brought in. You can tidy it up a little bit, this is just a small artifact. Um, so I just need to ungroup um, these objects. Okay. If I select that now, I can delete that, delete that, just a little bit down here, delete that. Okay, so that's um, pretty much everything's okay. Um, so this has got the outline for us and we'll be able to use this to constrain our machine area to save time so we're not going to be machining these other areas. Um, so I'll just bring that back in. Um, if I go to toolpaths now, select that. And uh, first of all, I'll do a roughing pass, and this will remove the majority of material with a larger tool, so it's going to speed up the time. And then I'll do a final finishing pass. So all I'm going to do is, because we've got this model selected, we just go to roughing. And here we've got some settings. First of all, the thickness of the material is 30. And um, it actually tells us here that the model thickness is uh, nearly 28 millimeters. So that material thickness is big enough. Now, if for example our stock material was um, 40 millimeters, well, it'll be able to cope with that. It'll just remove 
um, the extra material and it will assume you know you've got a, you know a further plinth or if we do it the other way you know it, it remo you know you've got a bigger gap above it um, but if we leave it at 30 and um, that's going to be fine and um, the gap is above the model so, so it removes the material above the model these are all fine if I hit OK um, and then we've just got our tool selection so I'm going to select a ball nose and six millimeter cutter I'm going to apply that okay and then we've got strategies here we'll do a 3d raster along x and this binary vector offset so we've got we've got this this boundary and and let's just uh, make sure we've got that selected as we want it and so if I click on that, that will actually um, select all the area outside that and anything inside that's going to be machined across here as well because we haven't selected these regions, just the full outline model. And then what we need to do, because we've got a 6mm uh, ball nose bit, we want to allow 3mm, uh, essentially the radius of the tool, um, to go along the outside so we can get a nice full cut to the edge here so we're not restricting ourselves by cramping in here and not being able to cut to the edge so if I put that 3 millimeters, and if I hit calculate oops I just need to re-enable that and if I hit uh, calculate it'll just go through and uh, generate these tool paths uh, for creating that so you can see you've got the material here but then the actual tool paths are within inside this and um, what we can do is just uh, preview that now so you can see what that will look like. So it's going through in layers and um, maybe I'll just show you that again, how, how you know, the, the tool setting. So you can see it's building down now. Okay, that should be the final pass around edge. Okay, and um, I'll just go back to that toolpath. And uh, sorry, I selected the six millimeter bit, um, and you would see your pass depth, how much it's allowed to go down in a particular plunge. And um, so we're allowing to go three millimeters a time because we're nearly 30 millimeters thick, and um, you're going to get roughly nine to ten passes to do that. And um, the feed rate, and um, that's actually a little fast, you probably set that to something like 20 and the plunge rate half of that um, but for this tutorial that's okay, we're not actually going to machine it out and okay and close that and um, so we've done the roughing pass and that's in our uh, preview itself, the roughing pass we just need to do the finishing pass and then to pick out the fine detail with a smaller tool and so if I now um, make sure, yeah, that's selected up there and if I go and do any finishing pass now, and raster's fine, and uh, if I select a ball nose here, and um, I change this to three millimeter, and just rename this, just setting up an additional tool in here, and step over ten percent, so that's a nice fine detail, and. Feed rate um, 20, 10, say. And if I apply that, OK. And if I had a boundary offset here of 1.5, the radius of the tool, which is 3 millimeter diameter, and if I hit calculate, it's then done this inner um, finer pass as well. So if I now preview this toolpath on top of the previous one, you can see it's only one pass that's required and it goes over the surface. And that's okay. So we've got our actual uh, line machined out now, but now what we need to do is just separate it from the material. So I'll add an additional uh, pass here on the profile. So again, we can still use and um, this outline that we've selected and um, 
what you would also do is add in these additional vectors as well. So if I just hide the line for a second, you can see what we've selected. And I just want to do a profile. Actually, I need to do it in two steps because I want to do an outside profile around here to cut around it. And I want to do an inside profile here to cut these out of the shape. And um, So what I'll do is just do this one first and create a profile. I'll say outside. Um, and I've got a 3mm end mill in here. And the start depth, because we've already cut away um, a lot of the block of material, we don't need to start at zero, back up 30mm above it. What we can do is go down, um, say, 27mm, and we'll do a cut of 3.5mm. So it'll be a total of 30.5. The material itself is 30 so we're going a further 5mm down into the sacrificial layer that's below. Um, so we've got the end mill, 3mm, that's fine, 10, 5, OK, we'll just leave those, that's OK for now. And uh, what we need to do then is just calculate that, and it gives us a warning, we'll cut through the material, we know that, that's what we want to happen. Hit OK, and as you can see the toolpath now goes around the outside. Uh, the other toolpath uh, I'd want to do would be this one. I just close that and I'll add profile this time it's inside the line and again we want to start down near the surface because we've already cut all the material away around here and uh, cut through to the same depth again and I calculate again saying it's just five millimeters deeper than the entire material we know that okay and um, so that's pretty much it so if I um, preview the profile first you can see we've cut through the material there and if I then add this final one here and um, preview that toolpath, you can see it's cut it out. Now there's the option here, uh, we can delete waste material, which will get rid of the outer material. And as you see, I you know, isolated the actual uh, machine part itself. Now there's one bit here, um, this will be fine, this is separated as well. The software doesn't know whether you want to keep the inside or outside of profile, so it's actually left it here. But if you want to create a, um, a preview image that you want to send to a customer, um, you'll want to tidy this up as well. So actually we'll do an extra dummy toolpath that we wouldn't export when we export the job. Um, but if I just check, so this is selected already. And what I would do is I would do a pocket profile to just remove that material. So again, starting at 27, down three and a half. And we are using our 3mm um, end mill. Um, and that's all fine. If I calculate that, we're going through the material, yes. And if I preview that toolpath, you can now see then we've got our finished model uh, complete. And if I swivel that around, you can see we've got a, a nice model created there. And so we're ready to go and machine that. So the last step then would be um, if uh, to do a, a tool export. So I'll select all of these, but not this last pocket one. And um, what I'll do then is this uh, save toolpath. So we're ready now to go to save toolpaths. And I see both use tool number one, but the geometry tools. Ah, of course, yes. And. Um, Maybe I just actually need to do it at the time to reassign those. Just check, that's okay. Let me just double check. Right. So this is the point, it must actually have to do that to save it and if once these have all been assigned and saved um, then I'll be able to do the recalculate all tool pass for changes. Okay, and let me just check what's there so it doesn't throw up an error. Even though we're not going to be using 
Okay, so that should be done. And then if I go and select, say, to a part, yeah, okay, here we are this time. So I've got a 3D roughing uh, to a part of a 6mm tool, which is tool number one. I've got a finishing pass, which is a 3mm ball nose, tool number two. And then I've got a couple of end mill operations, which is the outside profile and then the inside profile. And they're both using tool number three, the 3mm end mill. We've got our post processor selected down here, which is the WinPCNC ATC arcs. And all we have to do now is just save that toolpath and uh, save it uh, with a meaningful name to, to the desktop. And uh, all these toolpaths are being output together, so it'll be tool change operations uh, during the actual job. So we'll just call this Lion and as an NC file, save that. And that's uh, pretty much it done. And we've exported our machine code and we're ready to load that up then in our one PC NC. So if I just bring that down and I just start this up, I'm not actually connected to the machine here, but just to show you opening uh, the line code. And it's quite quite a big file, obviously, there's quite a lot of toolpaths in there. And we we'll just let it uh, take a few moments there to uh, upload it. So it gives you an overhead view um, of the pads and you can see there we've got the various uh, shading across here we've got our profile passes and there's actually you can see the the superimposition of the different height depths giving us a slight um, shading here uh, but basically all, all the, the details are there and we're just ready to reference the machine set the start point and uh, click go and change the tools as prompted by the software